Well, on the watch list, welcome. It is Laura from Hope 103.2. We've got Russ from Real Dialogue here as well. So excited for this heavenly experience of getting and talking about ordinary angels. We could yes, put it, sir. putting film through the lens of faith and talking about angels, sort of. I don't know. I can't wait to talk about this one. <laughs> yeah, well, if you haven't heard of Ordinary Angels, it stars Hilary Swank, Alan Richson, and the two of them play basic characters based on uh, on real people. This, this is a story about yeah. a, a guy named Ed who Alan, of course, plays, and he's a widowed father. He discovers that his daughter is also quite unwell. And Hilary Swank's character, she steps in, becoming aware of this story, and then suddenly really wants to help to make sure that this little girl gets the organ donation that she needs. And it becomes almost a saving grace for her in some respects as she deals with some of her own personal issues. When you're getting a movie like this, though, Russ, that is based on a true story, do you feel like there is Mm. a different responsibility that these actors have to bring it to life in a true or a more true way, I suppose? I think so. I think that not only do do they have a responsibility, but also those that are kind of behind the camera, you know, the director and all that, as far as looking at how they handle this with the most respectful way, but also as true to the account as possible. And so I think that they've done that fairly well. I think they had to take some artistic license kind of getting them there, but I felt like they did a great job. I think the other challenge for a film like this is to not come off as kind of your typical kind of hallmark kind of, uh, you know, film in the feel good film in a way. And I don't think that this one is. I think this one definitely is kind of a next level and definitely worthwhile considering. And focusing on that innate human kindness, you know, that's what I loved about Mm. this movie when Sharon, who doesn't know Ed, doesn't know his daughters from a bar of soap, yet she feels really (laughs) compelled when she comes across their story and this kind of call out for for help for her to get this organ that she needs. Sharon just wants to step up and do something about it, you know, which it's like, in in our day and age where people can be really preoccupied with their own lives, with their own stuff going on, to see somebody say, I see that you have a need over there and I want to do something to, to help your situation. I love that about this movie. I absolutely love it. I think that in talking with the guys at the Kingdom Story Company who put this together, they're kind of behind the I Can Only Imagine and also American Underdog and other films. They said that what's interesting about this era in films like this is that this is actually kind of a rebellious story in a way because it's a message of hope that we we really just don't have a lot of that anymore unfortunately most of the films that are out there can definitely be kind of kind of bring you down and be kind of depressing in so many different ways to have a hopeful message and really kind of seeing people going through some difficult times so we can relate with it but then also be able to really show how we can do this together so i I really love that about this film too and I think that that's what they were really trying to convey with this film. I also like that it has Hilary Swank and Alan Richson in it, because if you're a fan of Reacher, you see Alan way more as this like big, hulkish kind of character. Right. And he, you know, he he's not to be messed with. But then in Ordinary Angels, the, the softer side, the fatherly side, the deeper side in some respects of him as yes in the character of ed but also as an actor i really liked seeing a different kind of part of his ability but i also thought like you've got with these kind of movies when there is a faith thread in them when they are more hopeful Mm, sometimes they kind of get sort of shoved to the side a little bit as being not as good as like the bigger movies or not as interesting as these bigger movies but then when you get actors like this when two-time academy award winner hillary swank is like yes i will be in this movie yes i will help tell this story it added for me a kind of gravitas to a a story that deserves it but also a genre of movie that doesn't always get that kind of caliber actor in it I think that that's a great point. It kind of takes it back to even kind of when they were putting it together and talking with Andy Irwin about it. They weren't even going to ask Hillary Swank because they they had Alan Richson, but they didn't have somebody to kind of be kind of that force that's working with him throughout this whole story. But they decided to send it to Hillary, and they didn't find out till the, almost two weeks prior to filming that she was actually going to be a part of it. And she didn't even care what all of the different people that were making the decisions were. She because this story really hit her because of a story related to her father's story herself. And so I think that what's great about it is that it's not only it's a true story, also mm. they have some great, great actors in it, 
But then on top of it too, is that they have a personal stake in it and that they really yeah. loved this movie and they really loved this story too. And so I think that you can see that coming out on screen, not only in the quality of acting, but okay. also them really seeing and being a part of it and really wanting to honor this story too. So I agree with you. I, I just, I think they were a great, I know, and I'm actually kind of amazed that you didn't bring up the fact that Alan Richardson was also in Fast and the Furious 10 or <laughs> X, I mean, you know, just, just to, to kind of get that in there for you. Mm -hmm. But Thank uh, you. Yeah, exactly. I just want to make sure your your, your love for the franchise. Uh, but Alan, I really thought he showed a depth that I haven't seen. I mean, he's been around for quite some time, mm. even before Reacher. But with Reacher, you kind of see this hulkish man, like you were saying. But all of a sudden, to see him vulnerable, but also handling his rage about what's going on. Why am I experiencing these difficult things? And to see how faith but also how f friends and the community really get behind him. I think it's just, they've really done a great job of just kind of telling a great story with great actors in front mm, of the there's, camera. There's just like a, a vulnerable sensitivity to it in so yeah. many ways that worked well for the story and in the way these actors portrayed their characters, because that was something that I really appreciated about the father, Ed, in the way that he dealt with these issues of faith, you know, here is a guy who has had his wife pass away. He's got two young right. daughters. So you've got the grief of that, the questions that that would raise to then have a little girl that is in such desperate need of an organ transplant. And he's hustling as a single dad trying to, right. you know, make it all work. But then also again to see like yet another thing hit his family and what's the resolution going to be where is god in it to have i think that brought to screen in the uh in the kind of um in the way that alan brings that to life i thought was really powerful because at face value he is this really strong knows everything barrels through right. life kind of persona <laughs> but then you see that it's like even somebody who can present to the world in that way even they do have this this part of themselves that has to wrestle with the big questions and can't solve every problem and even though they might look like a hero they don't necessarily always feel yeah. like they can be the hero you know like i thought that was kind of a really powerful juxtaposition and and fortunately enough i got to speak with alan and hillary about the roles they play in this movie yeah, no. and he so was cool. saying it was very cool it was a, it was a highlight moment but he was saying uh, when I when I asked him about like how do you how do you wrestle between having faith but then also being angry with God or unsure with God, he was very open and said that those are questions that he's had in his own life. You know, in the faith that he speaks so much about very publicly, his Christian faith, he says that he's had those times where you are asking God, where are you? Are you even real? Are you right. going to show up? And the resolution doesn't necessarily come from some particular outcome. But he was talking about the strength of the wrestle that actually getting into a wrestle with God and, and, and opening ourselves up to asking questions, that's what helps our relationship with God become mm. deeper. It's not in avoiding it or pretending everything's okay, which I thought was a really powerful thought to bring into the dialogue around Ordinary Angels. I, I, you know what, that's actually one of the things I loved about it. And, and I think that also kind of lifted it beyond some of the, sometimes what we actually experience within this genre spe specifically, is that he didn't necessarily like this whole thing or just kind of go walk through and go hey we'll get through this and he really struggled really had to wrestle with it wrestling with his faith wrestling with this every situation that's going on because it was horrible i mean he had millions of dollars in debt that they mm. were but yet how god provided not only this person um in sharon steves but also that they were able to see how they were able to work together throughout it all but also how god did play a factor i loved how um john gunn the director kind of brought that in and that they make it, it's a true story, and that it's a great story, but then it was a faith story because God was in interwoven throughout it all. And I really mm. loved how they were able to do that. And not only showing that, they're showing that, you know what, we still go through difficult times. I think that's mm. one of the things that everybody does. I think we wish we didn't have to, but many times they make us better in the end, not that we wish them upon anybody else. 
but that really showing how God and also the community, specifically in this film, the church and friends, really are able to do that together. And I loved mm -hmm. how they really made that work and it wasn't cheesy. It yeah. wasn't like made up. And in the end, you're just like going, I can't believe this happened. Cause I looked it up and wanted to make sure outside of the fact that it was, it happened during the day opposed to at night. That was about the only thing about this whole helicopter thing was incredible. And so I found that really from the beginning to the end, it really had me wrapped. And I really think that this is a great film for people to consider, not only for just for themselves, but also even taking out their mm. families. I don't know what your thoughts are. What, what would you think? I mean, would should families be going and see this film in the theaters? I think it's accessible to all audiences, really, genuinely, because whether you're from a faith background or not, this movie is for you. Like, it's not right. it's not it's not a movie that some in this genre uh, tend to be where there's this big like sermon moment and there's a lot yeah. of like Jesus dropped in kind of these movies like it, it is not like that at all and I really appreciated that because I think for people who are in the Christian faith we have everyday lives as well like it's like you it's not yeah. it's not a yes faith is present in your everyday life but you're not constantly in a dialogue about everything to do with Jesus and everything to do with God and like you have a, a world that exists around the experience of your faith and I love that in this movie you're seeing these characters and these people deal with real life and real challenges and real things and faith is in there as part of the way that they deal with it but you right. don't feel like you're being hit with any particular kind of message or hit with some idea that you have to embrace. It's more like, let us paint the picture of the story of these two people. We're going to sincerely reflect how faith uh, impacted their experience, but we're not going to like hit you hard with it, which I thought was really well done. And it felt a lot more genuine to me than some of these movies can be. And so because of that, I felt like it made itself really available to such a variety of audiences. But then also from a content point of view, kids can watch this. It's yep. not going to have anything that is con confronting for them in that way. Like, yes, it's a dramatic story. So perhaps, you know, they want to be like mature yeah. children, but it's not going to have anything that is, you know, untoward in any other kind of way. And I just, I loved this movie. I genuinely thought Ordinary Angels, Ordinary Angels was fantastic. It was, you know, it was a genuine surprise to me because I kind of went in, uh, I, you know, when we watch these films, you and I watched quite a few films, especially within this genre, that we kind of go, oh, okay, you know, here's here's the typical kind of run sheet on this whole thing and what they end up doing, as you kind of mentioned before. But I was in the story. I felt like it was well told. I thought it was acted exceptionally well. But then on top of it, it's one that you, you still kind of continue to think about and talk mm. about afterwards. And that's what I love about movies like this. Because, I mean, just so people do know, there is some mature content. The fact that, you know, death of a spouse and then also some illness with the, with the children, which is very, as you said, dramatic. I think that that's real. And mm. so I think that that's something that is worthwhile engaging with. And once you kind of step out of the theater and go and have a coffee or dinner afterwards, sit down and kind of chat about it because I have a feeling most of the people in your family or your friend group that you go to watch this with will really want to talk about not only how this film impacted them, but also how th these very things are happening in a similar way to them. Mm. And so even though it happened in Louisville, Kentucky, um, that this story really can relate to us. And I think it does have an impact on your faith as well as your friendships and also just how you enjoy going to see movies. Yeah. And it really sparks a good dialogue about what inspires kindness, I think. Like that was one of the things yeah. that Hillary brought up in our interview was about what what would compel somebody to, as her character Sharon does, rally an entire community around the health and well-being of a child that they don't know. You know, like she campaigns right. hard to fundraise mm. and to get people to do what they need to do to help save the life of this little girl. Why would somebody do that? You know, and, and she she brought it back to being inspired by God and how, you know, we, we may not realize it, but she feels like that attribute of humanity absolutely comes from God. And I think that that buy-in that we've spoken about, that the actors had in this story, that is so evident on screen. Like it's not just a role that they're playing, but it's something that they really believe in telling and bringing to life. So you can tell from this conversation, Ordinary Angels is yes. definitely on the watch list uh, for the oh. both of us. But it's an important movie, I think, to experience in a time where the world does feel maybe a little bit chaotic and hard and not always kind like let's be inspired by ordinary angels 
Definitely. I think you need to get out to see it. It is important, but it's also entertaining. And that's what I mm. love about it too, is that you'll walk away going, ah, oh, it not only feels good, but I was entertained. It was worthwhile getting out to cinemas to see it. So I, I definitely yeah. agree. This one goes on my watch list. I mean, it's exciting to get into this time of year where we're seeing some great films like this. But this is one that I think is a great film that incorporates faith in a beautiful way. Yeah, and maybe I loved it so much because I watched it pretty quick after having watched Madam Web, which was terrible. <laughs> so I was like, so maybe I loved Ordinary Angels because I was like, yes, please take me out of whatever that rubbish was. Uh, right. Ordinary Angels, save the day. Uh, so right. loved it. But Russ, great chatting with you. As always, thank you guys for listening, for watching as well. You can subscribe to this podcast wherever you are listening. You can watch it on our Hope 103.2 YouTube channel. Subscribe there, sign up for notifications. And until next time, we will uh, see you later. Hope you enjoy watching some great movies. You can tell us all about them in the comment section too. But uh, see you later. Russ, goodbye. Hey, have a great one and hope you have an angelic experience and get out to see Ordinary Angels.